All right, guys, it is done. You guys can see behind me here, this is the new rack. We got the eye camper on there. I finally put my Max tracks back on there. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of why we switched. Not only because we wanted something new, but this is definitely something cooler and it's lighter. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. what's up guys welcome back to the channel today we got something new that's going to be going on the cement taco we got micah over there he's coming from uh, castle rock he's with up top overland if you guys haven't heard of them you guys will soon because our stuff is going to be just loaded with their products so uh, first off though we're going to be doing the bed rack as you guys can see we already took off the bed rack that was on here before we did that in a couple of videos ago um, when we took off the whole rooftop tent. So today we are going to be putting on the brand new rack and we're going to show you guys what that looks like. Hi guys, this is the truss from up top. This one is the mid height so it's designed to set on the plastic caps of your uh, Tacoma or Tundra right here and then the load bars will attach in here. That gives it the flexibility to spread out and do the other trucks but when you get it unboxed you're gonna see that there's six legs in here. They're not side dependent, so it's just three and three, doesn't matter. We'll get to that in a second. You've got these cool load plates that come. We'll talk about these for a second. So they nest into themselves. That locks in like this, and this is gonna line up across here, but to go over these holes, these inner four are for a water port. These guys come pre-tapped. You install these with the Max Trax pins and your shape and size is already laid out for your Max Trax recovery panels that comes with the, the rack and it's tapped on the thing you can put on either side. These middle ones are for rotopacks, so you can scooch them back and forth. We did this because the armor for the full cab height is the same as the mid and on the full cab height a lot of guys run them on the inside so they're not worried about them being uh, joined together how they'll lock. Doing it this way, you can push them out, you can flip them, slide them in, and lock the two cans together if they're storage or fuel, or you can flip them to the inside and actually move them in and out to maximize the, the gear load out on the panels. These upper slots you could use for anything, but in our mind, the, the spacing of them ends up right for axes and shovels using quick fists. So the whole system attaches to the same kind of load bar that comes with our roof rack, but if you'll notice, it's gonna have an end cap on it now, and that's because it comes preloaded with these threaded inserts these guys are what align with the slots in the truss legs and allow you to put this on a Tacoma or a Tundra or realistically any truck with a cargo rail system inside of its bed so the bags of hardware we'll go over during the installation but let's put this thing together and get it on your truck when you guys get this and you get it unboxed you're going to find out that like it shows up to you these are all shrink wrapped and then they're tucked inside of each other and then they have bubble wrap around them and they're shrink wrapped again so when you open them pull the shrink wrap off and if you need to cut at it just be aware that you got a powder coated finish under here you don't want to dig at it with a knife you just want to pick at the uh, shrink wrap till you get it started and then it'll unwind so you're going to find bags of hardware and we've already got one of them opened up so we'll talk about that one in a second but there's one with four bolts that goes to your Max Trax hardware and there's a label on them that tells you what's what. In the instructions that you'll see everything there's a CAD drawing that shows you which size hardware goes in which hole and how that corresponds to whichever panel and it shows you which slots and holes on here can be used for what we've tested them to make things easy to mount. There's another bag of smaller hardware and again we drove up here to install this one so there's no labels. I packed this one before I left but this one would say truss leg to load bar. And then this big guy, it's got these parts in them that are engraved 3205. That number doesn't really mean anything to you, that's a manufacturing number for us but this is the hardware that's used to actually fit the truss rack to the truck. So these are going to slide into your cargo tracks and bolt down. The fourth bag of hardware that we got really excited and opened before we could show you is full of these 20 mil M8s with lock washers and washers. And these are going to be used to attach the armor to the truss legs 
it'll set the spacing to where we need it to be to make it fit the truck perfectly and it's the first thing that you're going to want to do when you start the installation it's step one in our install so i use this table that he's got here we spread these things out the the size like the distance between them right now doesn't matter if you watch where these line up they're going to tell you they won't allow this thing to bolt together any way other than the way it's supposed to and one thing to touch on we'll show you guys this for shipping and hazmat reasons, we don't ship liquids. We don't ship uh, silicone, we don't ship Loctite. It's in the instructions, the brand that we use. This is just a Permatex. I get it at like AutoZone. You can order it on Amazon. You can get it anywhere you want. Just make sure that it's blue. Blue means that it's gonna tighten up and it's gonna stay tight, but you can get it apart later if you needed to change something. Red is like a wedding ring, it's like forever. <laughs> so you take the, uh, the M8 bolt, lock washer and washer, I'm going to put a little Loctite on it, even though we're using a lock washer. These are off-road overland rigs, man. They take a beating. And uh, it's just good practice to lock tight literally every fastener that you put on these things. So, take this. And you can see, I mean, we're not using a ton. Just move that around. That's going to line up on that hole. Do the same thing here. So three for this side, and I've got them hand tight, right? I'm putting everything in by hand. You don't see us using uh, impacts or power tools or anything like that. We do everything by hand, and we tighten everything with an Allen wrench by hand. If you're threading a screw and you feel it bind up, if, if you're doing it with a like an impact driver, it's by the time you feel it, it's too late. It's already locked up. And stainless hardware is the best stuff in the world for being outside. It's also the most susceptible to uh, cross thread or strip itself. They call it uh, galling is what they call it, and it's, it's notorious for doing it, um, especially when you're using power tools at high speed and a lot of torque. So, just move this guy around. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start each one, and it'll start to square itself up and get where it's supposed to go. So each side's gonna get seven. Two on the outside ends, three down the middle. So I'm going to take the five millimeter Allen wrench and just get them all going. Somewhere in there there's a hole. There we go. Hmm. See that lock together? Yeah and then it wants to line up. That, we've got this groove and it's got this chamfer on it to keep it from chipping the powder coat. But this little cut right here is what makes sure that this thing lines up perfectly. So if you saw, I stuck the Allen wrench in the hull and just kind of pulled it and it sucked these two pieces together. Because the alignment, if you're using it by itself, you could be off by a little bit and it really wouldn't matter. But if you're gonna mount like an EX rack on top of this, the tolerances are super tight for the brackets that mate one piece to the other. Yeah. That's why they're built the way they are. We got the Loctite and the lock washer on there. So literally like snug is good. You don't want to over crank them, just get them tight and then give them a little push. That's more than enough to keep them tight. Okay, so there's seven, right? There's a sub assembly of a truss. Driver, passenger side, doesn't matter. But what we can touch on while we have it flipped this way, if you scroll in here and look, can you read that engraving? 2G, 3G Taco and Tundra. This big slot is for all your third generation Tacomas and every Tundra that we've chested it on. These upper holes, see how that lines up? This is our pressure washer. So this little guy is going to distribute the weight across here when it clamps in. It's going to push flat instead of just pushing where the bolts are. pushes against this whole thing. On the second Gen Tacoma, the cargo rails in the bed are a little higher. 
So we've got the holes in there for the second gen, the slot for the third. So we're gonna repeat the process for the other side and at that point we're ready to get them onto the truck and then we'll set the load bars. Oh, yes! The mountain hatch cover is so much better than that wavy shit. Yeah. Right, so I'm just gonna dump all this out so we can talk about These are the slides that are gonna go in here. There's three per side. Same thing. And then you've got 35 millimeter hardware with washers. Okay. So there'll be 12 of those uh, total. Six over here, six over here, and then I'll grab the uh, washer. This, believe it or not, believe it or not, that is also a washer. Okay. So this is a washer. And this is a washer. Washers help distribute the weight of the fastener, right? Put tension across the whole thing instead of one centralized location. So that's the same job that this little guy has. These will correspond to be up inside of here. And then the bolts will pass through. And when you tighten them up, instead of them pushing against just one focal point, they'll distribute that weight across the whole thing. It makes this whole assembly really, really stout. Okay. So we need to get these out, right? So just push those and they'll go back in and this one already doesn't have them but you know the little cargo turn thing so on the tundra you need to slide them out because um, they don't twist they slide out the back on the tacoma you unscrew them and then you push in on them and they'll twist so on the tacoma you can put them back in uh, the tacoma ones do fit the tundra ones if you wanted to buy those and put them back in if you want to reuse the factory tundra ones, you need two people because you need to get this one up here and started, get them in here, and then move everything around. But you got to pull them out to put this in. So you'd have to put in one, then put in a slider, a uh, factory little cargo hook, then another one, and then another one. Does that make sense? So, put that in there. And it, you're not trying to align this to anything because this is going to align this. So we're, we're good with just getting in there. We know we need one up there at the front, one closer to the middle, which is going to be really fun with that air compressor in here. And then uh, another one. So same thing on the other side. And go ahead and set up all of your hardware. So it's lock washer and washer. Come over, set the guy up. So inside here, we've got those slides. Get my washer. I just need to get one of them started. And I just want to get them started enough that it'll kind of hold itself up here so I don't have to support it with my hands. Then I can fight with the others to get them aligned. I'm going to get up in the bed. It makes it a little easier to line up. So I'll just push. If you're pushing them and you feel them get stuck, there's a little detent up in here every so often for that factory thing. So I'll try and catch one. And when you want to, you can, right? But it'll get catch, uh, stuck on it, so you just kind of pull them forward to where they're flush against the front, and then you, there it is. See it? Right there? It's a little tongue up inside of here and in hardware. So if you just pull it to the front, you can push it right where you want it to be. And about the same amount of Loctite that we used on uh, these guys right here. It's not a ton, it's just enough. And then for alignment, what we've done 
is if you look at the leading edge of this, I put this back in and then I want that to seat right against it. And then you can push this guy until that's in the middle. So what I've done is I've slid that aluminum slide all the way against the back of that and then push this until the washer lines up on the foot. And right now I just want them hand tight. I don't want to over torque them. Just enough to push them down on the platform and keep them parallel so that we can install the load bars. So there. So right now it's not tightened, right? And it's still pretty stout even without the, the bars up in the center of it. All we're really trying to do is lock it down in place because if we use that measurement of pushing this against here, then the other side will automatically line up where we need it to be and the load bars will go across the truck parallel. So we'll come back when we're done and tighten everything down to a M8, so 28 foot-pounds, give or take. It's not a ton. It's about half the, the tightness of a lug nut. There we go. And again, same thing, we're not gonna over tighten them. We're just getting them tight enough that I've got very little play here so that we can install the load bars. We're gonna start here, then here, then here. And all we're gonna do is get them up in here and get the hardware started. Then we're gonna check it and make sure that it's square. With these left loose, we'll tighten all 12 bolts up and then we'll set the load bars. Had your load bars with these caps already screwed on. We put them in there because we preload these guys for you so you don't have to fight with them one less piece that you're going to lose but these slides are they'll go anywhere you want that three hole slide will correspond to the slot in this truss leg same thing on both sides so basically each contact point where a truck where a load bar goes into a truss you're going to get three and three so six twelve right so we got a huge bag of hardware laid out we went ahead and installed the washers and if you notice the truss to a load bar doesn't actually get a lock washer. It's going to rely on Loctite and the stainless flat washer to exert the pressure across here. But what we've figured out is that with the steel fastener, doing a lock washer on here actually affects the way that this goes all the way tight and it makes it really hard to get apart if you wanted to take it apart later. So on this one, we only use a washer and Loctite. So you're going to when we go to do this for real, we're going to start up there in the front. But you're going to set this up inside of here. And we're going to start the fastener will slide through this slot and start in that hardware. And you want to start every one of them on all three load bars. So 12, 24, 36 of them. Get them all started and then I'll show you how to square it. So if you see here, um, when you're putting this piece on, this top part might not line up. That's because this might be too tight um, right now while we're assembling everything. So make sure that is a little bit loose so that way you can push this back and forth. That way you can align the holes properly. And I'm not tightening these at all. I'm just getting them seated. That's it. If you look, it can still slide. That's what we want. And we're going to move on and do the same thing to the other load bar. See here, one in here. It's one, two, and three. And right now the position of it isn't that important. See how you move back and forth? We're okay with that right now.
so see this? We want this kind of play in this right now. So they should all pretty well move free, right? And uh, even on the other side, because this is flat and this is flat. So once these are all started like this, we want to go back and we want to tighten these up because this has to be in the right location. When you torque these back, this is going to fit flush against the cargo rail. It's going to push this flush back against the plastic cap and it's going to square these jokers up on their own so that you don't have to really focus on this. You don't need a laser level or anything crazy like that to line this up. Once these are back and tightened down fully, the load bars will be sitting where they're supposed to sit. So take the five mil and then just start putting the cowboy torque on them. You just make sure that that, see how the split in that washer right now is very far apart, right? When we spin it, see it flatten itself out? So that's pretty tight by hand, and then I want to give it like another good quarter or half turn. So this is with one leg tightened out of six. Right, so now we're gonna work around and we'll do the rest of them, tighten them up this side, then that side, then we'll come back and do these. Loctite, all these guys. And so it comes with this. Okay, and they need to go out. So you find the holes here. This goes right here. This will thread in. I repeat, this will thread in. There we go. And the spacing of this is right. If you get the pins installed, they'll clear everywhere and the max tracks will go right on here. You don't have to measure anything. You don't have to move them. That's the difference between these and like our standard max track bracket. So uh, important note, if you guys are ordering trusses from us or Twan, either one, and a truss is where you're going to mount your recovery gear, your axe, your shovel, your, your max track, your rotopacks, you don't need any of our brackets. They're all built into the truss system. You just need the, the product specific mounts. So like for max tracks, you need the pins. For rotopacks, you need the turn mounts. Uh, for axes and shovels, you need a quick fist. But you don't need to buy any of the external brackets off of our website or his website for those jobs if you're mounting them to the truss. They're already here. Okay, so your pins go in these holes. And you turn them, and you know, max tracks throw right up on top of it. Okay? Cool. As far as solid, everything's tightened up now. So, all right? No problem. All right, guys. It is done. You guys can see behind me here, this is the new rack. We got the eye camper on there. I finally put my max tracks back on there. So, I'm going to show you guys kind of why we switched. Not only because we wanted something new but this is definitely something cooler and it's lighter so let me show you guys that right now so here it is the finished product i got my max tracks mounted back on there and the eye camper mini this is the sky camp mini if you guys haven't seen it it just got released um, and they won't ship out until march but here's the rack got the uh, rotor packs mounted on there and uh, still playing with what I actually want mounted on this side because as you can see I wouldn't be able to open it with the rotor packs on there so I might do a shovel mount and an axe mount on here instead and then put the rotor packs somewhere inside um, that way I probably won't have to use 
a lock um, but yeah what do you guys think look pretty good and check these things out right here so all of the truss have these little notches right here as you can see um, that way you can use them as uh, mounting points or uh, uh, tie down points for anything you might need to tie down um, because you know with Toyota you only get a couple the couple ones down here and the one way back there so it's really nice to have extra tie down points so the cool thing about this rack is that you really don't have to buy any kind of mounting brackets where like on the RCI bed rack I used to have you do have to buy the Max Trax mount where this one comes with it and these holes back here they are already pre-drilled pre-slotted to fit pretty much anything you can think of to mount to these for example these rotopacks there and um, of course you can put a quick fist where you can mount your shovel or axe or anything like that so that's super nice that you don't have to buy anything extra and uh, also of course this thing is aluminum so up top overland they do everything using aluminum and actually it's a thicker aluminum than what Prinzu uses on their roof rack it's a pretty sweet rack it looks way cooler especially these truss on here the way they have it bent it looks super cool the RCI one is really nice still we still have it but it is steel so it does add a little bit more weight not a lot but it's nice when we were holding this rack on the ground you can actually feel how light it is compared to the RCI one it's not a lot but it does make a difference especially because with everything we add on this truck every pound counts especially when you're off-road so let me know what you guys think about this rack if it's cool if it's not would you guys get one um, we're going to test it out we're going to take it off road uh, and see if it holds up but as you saw in the video we were pretty we were yanking on this thing pretty hard and it does not move especially with that flat plate super solid so we shouldn't have any issues at all all right guys that is pretty much it for this video if you guys have any questions let me know i'll try to answer them um or send us an email or whatever and we'll, we'll get to it pretty quick or a dm on instagram we're pretty fast on instagram so so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comment below and uh we'll see you guys next time peace